Welcome to the final concert of premieres and performances for the March 2021 edition of 121. Four composers and four performers joined me and guest faculty Marcos Balter, Haruka Fuji, and Dana Jessen for a week of coachings, presentations, and deep discussions on music and so much more culminating in tonight's performance. I wanna give a huge thank you to all the participants and faculty in making this week so incredibly memorable and for the amazing music and videos you are about to experience. So without further ado, let's get to it. Hello, my name is Oliver Dubon and I'm the composer of Element for Solo Violin written for violinist Jennifer Gersten. This work was written immediately after I moved to Tallinn, Estonia where I currently live and was written as a sort of reflection on the area where I grew up, um, which is um, near the Blue Ridge Mountains, um, specifically in Palmyra, Virginia. One of my favorite places to go to, um, to drive to while growing up was a scenic overlook um, where you would get a really great view of the Blue Ridge Mountains. It's an area between Charlottesville and Waynesboro, Virginia. Um, and this work was written as a sort of depiction of the journey of going up to and coming down from that scenic overlook. Specifically, it's divided into five sections. First, the ascent. Second, the mist, which if you know, the Blue Ridge Mountains have like, they're, they're a blue sort of haze or mist that's laying on top of them. Uh, third is the wind. It's extraordinarily windy up there. Fourth is the grand scale of it all. And then fifth is packing everything up and going back down the mountain. Uh, this sweet work was written very specifically with Jennifer in mind, is specifically written for her extremely virtuosic playing, as well as written um, to give her a chance to hone her skills of playing much slower, more reflective music. So several of the sections are very, very slow and reflective, but there is, of course, when you come to the wind and to the scale of it all sections, very, very fast virtuosic playing on the violin. She has done a very, very great job with the piece, and I cannot wait for you to hear it.
you are about to hear Inner Space by Tiang Mi Choi. My interpretation of this piece is the cello represents a human voice navigating through a world of turbulence and solitude depicted by the electronics part. There are many moments of simultaneity and departure between the two parts which represent self and non-self, which I believe also corresponds to our experience in everyday life. There are times when we feel at one with the world, and there are times when we feel ourselves conflicting with the world. I believe the composer achieves a musical resolution by the end, as both parts ascend, which often alludes to sublimation, or in this piece, immersion between the self and non-self. To quote my friend Max Smith, ego is like our territorial instinct, and when we surrender that to nature, we become like an atom in an ocean full of atoms and we feel rich and full. Here is Inner Space by Kyung Mi Choi. Thank you for listening.
Hello, my name is Matt McAllister, and I am the composer of this next piece entitled Still Pools, Seven Movements of Langston Hughes, performed by my collaborator, Ken Congorder. Uh, this is the first, uh, first time I worked very closely with a performer um, on a piece of mine, and it was very special to share ideas and thoughts before there was any music ever written. Uh, this work was inspired by the poem April Rain Songs by the great Langston Hughes. Each movement is based on one line of the poem, uh, there are seven lines total, thus seven movements in total. Uh, I'd like to give my deepest gratitude to Nick Fotinos, Marcos Balter, Dana Jessen, and Haruka Fuji for their amazing insight through the various coaching sessions in the one-to-one -one workshop. I would like to thank My Cincinnati for their generosity and uh, support. Uh, I'd like to thank my friend Lizzie Duquette, uh, whose visual art is incorporated into the video production. Uh, lastly, I'd like to give a shout out to my friend and collaborator, Kenkin Gorder, for his amazing playing, his knowledge, and, and his enthusiasm. I hope you enjoy this piece. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Matt. So this collaboration really pushed us both out of our comfort zone, um, but for the better. This whole month and past week, we've had a transformative experience, not only on the collaborative piece that we were working on, but as professionals and creative thinkers. What you'll see in this piece, uh, especially in the video, is a lot of visuals uh, and very nature-like sounds, uh, literally actually, thanks to a suggestion that Haruka Fuji made to us, which was embracing the pandemic and the lifestyle we have to live right now. I hope you enjoy.
Hi folks, this is Peter Traber. I'm currently in Cambridge, Massachusetts, which is on Wampanoag or Wampanoag land. Um, I wanted to take this opportunity in the one-to-one -one, uh, for my solo piece to present a piece that I wrote. Um, and it's a piece that I wrote early on in the pandemic. It's called Procedure Number One. Um, it's a, a weird piece. There's a lot of ideas in there, um, which is sort of the feedback I got um, this week when I talked to Nick about it. Um, and it's definitely a work in progress, um, but it uh, sort of encapsulates the beginning of the pandemic for me where I had stopped working so many hours at my job um, and uh, had a lot of extra free time, but I had all these thoughts from the job that I was working with all these creative things that I hadn't gotten down in paper in a while because I was tired from the job. Um, and so I just kind of put a lot of things down all at once and uh, wrote a small score, wrote some text-based stuff, allowed room for improvisation, which has been a huge outlet during the pandemic. Um, 
and you know they stay all with a little dose of cynicism which is always always nice um but yeah that's sort of that's sort of the gist of it i'll, I'll let the rest uh speak for itself um but yeah this is procedure number one um and i hope you enjoy
Great, I have four pieces today. I got an orange, I got a red, I got a yellow, and I got a blue. Uh, anyone up for the orange? It's going at $5 to pop first, $5. <clears throat> anyone got $5? $5 here. Ah, Nick Fatino's $5 for the orange. There we go. Anyone want more? $5? No? $5? Sold to Nick. Sold to Nick. Nick, I'll get your address after that. Here we go. We got red. We red. Anyone else? Let's start this at three. This one's not great. I didn't love this one. $3. Or, or a song. You can sing me a song. Matt, $3 or a song? $3. $3. There we go. I, I, I can sing you a song right now and I can get that piece of art from you. 10, 10, 10 second song right now. Here we go. You, you want me? Is everyone? everyone I want cool? that. This is it. You offered. Here we go. Uh, uh, I had to prove that I could make it alone now, but that's not me. I wanted to show how independent I've grown now, but that's not me. That is not you, Matt, but this is yours. I can tell you that much. Here we go. Two more. We got yellow and we got blue. Yellow and we got blue. Yeah, Oliver. Which one do you want? Um, yellow. Yellow. What are you offering? Um, I will. I will sing you. Um, uh, in relation to what Chase was presenting today, I will sing you some Gregorian chant. The uh, Gregorian chant that was in his uh, piece. Ooh, this is great. Let's. Are you going to sing it right now, or is this a like yes, in exactly a private right room now. kind it's of deal? Computer audio, so it won't uh, be that good. Ange lingua gloriosi. That was great. Okay. We got one more. This one's hot topic. This one has some perspective drawing in it. Perspective. Here we go. It's really hot, hot stuff here. Last one. It's the last one. It's original composition right here. Is that a chase? Chase is raising his hand. Chase, what are you what are you offering? I have some um, pandemic toilet paper. Ooh, what does that mean? It's toilet paper gotten at the first wave of the pandemic. My God, seriously? Uh, that's va that's very rare. Stuff. If you, it, it, can you sign that? Can I get a Chase Chandler signature on that? And I'll, I'll give you this. I'll um, sign this one yes, too. But don't tell anyone because I only have a, a, a certain amount of stock, but yes. Okay, great. That's it. Sold. Cool. Uh, let me just record this and then uh, the piece will be over. Okay, so we got buyers. Nick Fatinos. Chase Chandler. Oh, it's not typing in, isn't it? See, this is what happens. Pandemic gives you poor internet. Oh, I'm gonna have to put this in after the fact. There we go. Okay, Nick Fatinos, Chase Chandler. We got a, a Matt McAllister. I forget if you're C or uh, something like that. We'll we'll fix it afterwards. And who was the last one? Oliver, Oliver, Oliver. Great. Fire info I'll get after the fact. Uh, selling value. We got five bucks plus a few songs. Let's say, I don't know, the songs are at 20 bucks a piece. So they're pretty expensive. I value songs highly. So let's say that's 45. And then the toilet paper is going to be priceless. But, you know, priceless can be valued at like 400, 500 bucks. So let's say it's 500 $45 labor costs, living wage, Cambridge, Massachusetts, 1650. It's about three hours of work. So let's do 16.5 times three. Uh, yeah, okay, there we go. That's a nice value of the work. Great, well, thank you all. I'll send, uh, send these to your uh, address after the fact. I'll get your stuff and uh, I really appreciate the time. Hi, my name is Jennifer, and I am so excited to be performing for you all today, Lonely Suite, by the pianist, composer, visual artist, poet, conductor, professional polymath, Lyra Auerbach. This piece was written in 2002 and has the subtitle, Ballet for a Lonely Violinist. I don't think that Auerbach could have anticipated how apt this title would become 18 years later. I found this piece on one of many meandering Google searches and was struck by this musical premonition of what it's been like to be a performer over this past year and hopefully not too much longer. It's in six movements, dancing with oneself, boredom, no escape, imaginary dialogue, worrisome thought, and question. Across these movements, you're going to hear a number of different styles and characters. Some, as the title indicates, are balletic. Others are desperately bored agitated, inquiring. 
Unlike a lot of music for solo violin, this piece doesn't take itself too seriously, emphasizing character and expression over sheer virtuosity. At this point in the pandemic, we're all really used to swimming in these feelings. And before I started learning this, I was wondering if I really need to have any more in my life. But the charm of this music refashions these feelings into a worthy source of inspiration, and so learn it I did, and I'm glad for it. I hope you all enjoy.
My name is James Alexander. I'm a doctoral cello performance student at the University of Kansas. My name is Jack Herskowitz, and I am a composer. We're trying to attempt something a little bit different. What we're showing you tonight is really just a blip in a long-standing process that James and I have been engaging with over the past month. These tech scores have emerged. Um, based on sort of conversations that we've had as we sort of gotten to know each other as just people and musicians. This piece is titled Composed Meditation Number 2 on Language and Spectra, but really the score is, is just a quote by a great composer, Anthony Braxton. This is what you're looking at to ultimately create the music. The, the, the quote is, if I hear a sound, I hear spectra. There's some instructions that, that follow it based on things that I've heard in James's playing. Cultivating a style of improvisation, a personalized style. Improvisation, composition, whatever you want to call it. Despite the deceptively simple nature of the score, there's a lot more that's actually gone on behind the scenes. Every day, James has performed um, the scores, recorded them, and sent them to me. And then I send my reflections back, and he also has his um, reflections, and it's no different today. You should be hearing some of those daily performances right now. So there's recordings like this that were happening every day. This is something that is quite out of my comfort zone. At first, I was perhaps a bit disoriented. There was there was some apprehension. I grew more comfortable over time. You start to see the parallels between the text and conventional notation. It, made me become more comfortable and just letting things happen. You're going to be hearing discoveries being made in real time. Directly rooted to our sense of spontaneity and creativity. I have discovered a part of me that was present and has always been present since I was younger, but now I'm feeling more comfortable with pursuing this aspect of myself. So with tonight's performance, we're really just inviting you into this process. This process can continue into infinity. There's something really raw and intense about this process of music making, and that's very evident in the way that James plays.
Paths by Toru Takamitsu is an unaccompanied trumpet piece that premiered in 1994. He originally wrote it for a wonderful trumpet player named Hokan Hardenberger. And he happens to be one of my uh, favorite soloists I listen to frequently. In his program notes, Takamitsu wrote, I composed Paths for solo trumpet right after I heard the news of the death of Witold Lutoslavski. He was a Polish composer and was one of the best in his time. This piece is a fanfare to lament the death of Lutoslavski. In the spring 1992, when I saw Lutoslavski in Warsaw, he said, as contemporary composers, we should think about the melody more seriously and we should make an effort to create new melodies without sparing ourselves. This conversation strongly impressed me. In paths, the simple melodic motifs walk through the subtle changes of the scenery, just like the paths of a garden. Paths is one of the most in-demand trumpet solo pieces, especially during COVID. So I hope you enjoy Paths.
In the fashion of an empress, 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 in the fashion of an Replete with flickers of golden feathered lips. I wrap her in. From the shallow depths, <laughs> I long for the old and wings of flame. I long for. <laughs> I long for the old and wings. I long for the old and wings of flesh. Yeah. 
majesty promises again. Fresh from from the mossy, mossy ocean. <gasps> Ha, ha, ha.